Hey, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. This time we've got some gameplay for you guys. You guys really seem to like the live gameplay, so we got some more for you. This time it's going to be me on the left piling my Lemon Lime Golden Frieza deck. And actually on the right is Adrian from No Counters No Combos. We got together the other day, did a podcast, recorded some gameplay for you guys. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. While we're doing the mulligans and the shuffling and whatnot, uh, if you guys new to the channel, hitting that subscribe button would be super duper dope for you guys, as well as that like button if you like this video. Uh, if you guys want to talk about anything Dragon Ball Super related, check out our Discord server down in the description below. There's a link to that there. And if you guys are longtime fans of the channel, you should check out my Patreon, which helps the channel a lot with a lot of funding of different uh, equipment and whatnot. We actually just got this pop filter, if you guys have been paying attention to me, uh, spew on about nonsense. We got this pop filter from the patreon so thank you guys so much for that really really appreciate it just goes to show uh you know that's how the content that's how the uh, quality of the content is going to increase so thank you guys so much for that really really appreciate it helps me out a lot so we got me going first charging the yellow hitting the avenging frieza turn one so that's the ideal turn one play is the avenging frieza or the infernal villainy frieza uh either you want to you know cycle through the deck with the avenging or you want to start self awakening with the uh infernal villainy so we've hit our curve already that's the one real, real big downfall with the lemon lime deck is that if you don't hit your curve initially, uh, you fall really far behind. But we're doing good so far. Doing good. Got to make sure I don't play into that after image technique. Because if I do, uh, we're going to be in for a bad time if my Frieza gets popped. So now we've got the one drop trunks coming out. Just good red card. So yeah, Adrian's playing the uh, peel off red wish deck. And he's playing like pretty archetype based. I mean, I think his win con is like the, the Piccolo, the red four drop Piccolo from the new set. Uh, but he's also playing like just good red cards like the one drop trunks and chain attack, which you'll see a little bit later. So yeah, he goes through his life, doesn't pull out a Dragon Ball, goes through the deck and pulls out a Dragon Ball. So 20k crit coming at my leader. And, you know, the first four life don't matter, especially when uh, it's 20k and I have to waste three cards to save it. Yeah, that's that's easy. But he hits a super combo. That's pretty big, honestly. That is pretty, pretty big. Going to give me another card with the Pilaf Swing. This I will take this all day. But you got to start dealing damage somewhere. So we get a green charge, and we've really hit our curve really well here, everyone. So we got the uh, nail coming down on turn two, which is absolutely perfect. Oh, we got the one drop Frieza next to it to activate the bond, and then the Frieza will sacrifice the other Frieza, like our Frieza leader. I noticed that Adrian kind of separates his Dragon Balls from his graveyard. Um, yeah, just to make, just so we can count, just so we can both keep count how many Dragon Balls he's got and drop. No, don't confuse that for like a warp or anything like that. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, we've got uh, really, we're off to the races here with that. I mean, the nail on turn two was. Super clutch, getting us an additional card. Now we have an energy up to protect it. Although it doesn't look like I have an Infernal Villainy cell in hand, so it might be a little bit tough to protect it. Man, this is awesome. I just feel so legit with this pop filter and this mic. It's super duper awesome. Thank you guys again so much for all the help and support. You guys are really the best. Oh, so he's got an, he's got an Oolong coming down, but he wasn't lucky enough to hit an Oolong's Wish early enough. That is actually devastating. At that point, I'm just like, okay, he couldn't plus off the Oolong. I'm just going to let the nail uh, die here. That is super unfortunate, though, that he couldn't hit that earlier. That is the one crazy thing about that Oolong card is that it does generate a plus, like, literally just a plus, draw two, which is absolutely nuts. So I'm down to five life here, which is a good spot. I do charge my Self Awakener, but I, I really just don't want to tap out for it in this case. So... I'm going to just use my leader effect to cycle through a dead card, untap energy, draw a card. And now, like, you know, I could still go into self-awakening. I think I still have another Goku in play if I'm, if I'm in hand, if I'm not mistaken. But I decided to go for a different setup here. I just want to go one drop Frieza, set up for next turn's uh, leader effect. And I got the nail in hand, so I just want to drop that. Set up for next turn. I mean, odds are he's probably going to awaken me next turn if he deals with the nail and has other swingers. Oh no, I remember what I do here. What I do here is I combo on this swing because I have four in my drop area. I combo on this swing so that my uh, self awakening negate is live. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to drop the uh, source of power. I'd rather have the nail on board, try and protect it, and uh, set up an untapped play for next turn. As convoluted as it might sound, I think this is the better play than just going for the straight self awaken. So yeah, we're going to negate Self-Awaken. He's going to grab his fourth Dragon Ball. He's definitely not off to the races here. I mean, he's got a little bit of a slow start. 
That's why I like live and die by Dragon Ball Secret Bulma in these decks because it just gets you there so much faster. Uh, we talked about it in the middle of this game too, and uh, he likes the card, but uh, for, for whatever reason he just decided not to play it. I definitely would play it in a, in a deck like this where, um, yeah, you're, you're just really not off to the races. Really, really slow start. So he's gonna go grab another Dragon Ball. So he's got four now. We are tapped out, but we do have access to super combos right now, which is pretty nice. Okay, so he's gonna get five down there. Draw two cards. He's gonna go leader into nail. He's gonna drop 5k into it, and he gets out comboed. And passes the turn back to me. So the four energy turn in this deck is where things get really, really cool. So we're gonna throw a Piccolo down and charge, but we do have another one that we're gonna play this turn. You gotta play this very carefully to not get straight up blown out by the uh, after image technique. So the, the nail should be the first thing to swing. Let's see how let's see how good I am. Let's see if I do that. First, I'm gonna drop this Frieza because one energy with a with a Frieza army card literally turns into two energy, which is uh, really solid and a draw card. So really cool. Yeah, we've hit our curve and stride at the beginning of this game, so this is super awesome. Now going at the leader, and the nail does gain the plus 5k for the entire turn, so after image will not really affect it the rest of the turn, which is really nice. Now we got the Piccolo going in. I believe he's at 4 life here. Gonna just try and put him down to 2, so the next turn kill shot is easier. He is gonna take a life for after image. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about this. The nail does not blow up. The nail survives because he gains 5k for the whole turn. Which is really, really nice. So now Adrian's coming up to his 4 energy turn, but unfortunately he's had a very slow start. He didn't see any of his Oolong wishes, so his Oolongs are not draw 2s. Uh, that would have been really helpful early on. And he's got 5 Dragon Balls in drop, so he's got to get one off his leader effect and hope to draw into another one or, some, or something along those lines. Because he is just really, really hurting right now. Charges the M2. Not super duper helpful in this matchup. A lot of my one drops don't really stick around the board too much. I use my leader effect to get rid of them and get value off of them. Oh man, another Oolong without a Oolong's Wish. I think I talked to him. I think he plays two in his deck. And I mean... Man, I would bump that up if, if Oolong was going to be one of my big drops. That draw 2 is honestly ser is seriously really good. I mean, that paired with a M2 would actually kill the nail, which could be pretty solid. So he's going to go get the, a Dragon Ball out of the life. Now, this is why I always get my Dragon Balls out of the life before anything else, before getting them out of my deck, is because I really don't want to get into situations like this where, uh, you know, I had to pick a Dragon Ball up and now it puts me to 2 life. You know what I mean? I'd rather pick it up early and just and play defense accordingly rather than, you know, hope that my opponent gives me them off my life. That's just the philosophy that I, that I you know, kind of go by for it. So he's going to go for the Dragon Radar, trying to get for the last Dragon Ball, or for a Desire. Uh, he hasn't even seen any Desires yet, so this way when his leader flips, you know, you get some value off that. But I think he completely whiffs here, which is super unfortunate. He's going to go back and reference his hand. But yeah, he just like completely whiffs, which sucks. Oh, that's, that's the worst. His deck is not giving him any grace of luck over here at all. So he's going to go Pilaf Leader into the nail. And I'm just going to let it die. It's not worth to save it, really. Next turn, I'm going to go for the game, sh the game shot. And uh, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, uh, then I, you know, this deck is so defensive that I think it just plays plenty of defense. So we're gonna drop a one drop, see if we can get another search. We get a Guldo, so any any free card is good, although Super Combo would've been amazing there. We're gonna use the Piccolo just to blow up the Oolong for free, which is insane. And the really cool thing is that on the Awakened side, one Freeza Army card and one energy turned into two energy and a draw card. So I can tap out for a play here and still stand the stuff back up. So we're gonna go for the Shenron play here. And sorry for the glare, guys. We're gonna go for the Shenron play here, and we're gonna use the Freeza to resand two energy. Um, you know, we're basically just banking on game here. I mean, if he has a negate, he has a negate. But um, we're going to try and go for game here. And if it doesn't work, I still have two energy to defend myself, which is insane. I still have, like a, I think I want to say, like a 12-card hand, which is just nuts. 
like i am like this this is a control deck which i wrote about in one of my recent patreon articles check that out if you're interested in uh reading a little bit about control and dragon ball but this is one of my favorite control decks in the game because once you're in the driver's seat it's so it's just so secure it's really cool so he can't decrease my piccolo but he's still gonna be a beefy boy so i'm not gonna go in for it he's gonna decrease the super combo Hopefully I don't run into another uh, after image, but if he puts himself down to one, you know, I'm not, I'm kind of okay with that. He puts himself down to one to blow up my super combo. Man, I have a little book in my hand. It's insane at this point. He is going to go down to one. Uh, he pretty much, he pretty much foresees that I don't have another swinger, which is true. I mean, I don't, I don't have an overrun play because I do have the Shenron on board, which shows I probably don't play overrun elms. So he goes down to one. I'm not going to swing with the super combo because only a 2k attacker. And uh, the Shenron can't attack, unfortunately, so that's going to uh, survive him a turn. So he's coming on turn 5, still not awakened. That is rough. That is rough if I've ever seen rough. So he's going to charge his uh, King Piccolo extra card. Doesn't look like he sees the King Piccolo either, but he's going to just drop the Dragon Radar, pick up two Dragon Balls, and draw two. Just like kind of bypass that step. But uh, yeah, he does that. So then tap two here for everybody's pal. So this is gonna get him a card and a Dragon Ball. So a nifty little plus two here is pretty cool. We're gonna go Yamcha. I want to say into leader. Grab his last Dragon Ball. He'll finally be able to flip over. 20k at my leader. Let's see if he combos anything else. Oh, sorry, he's gonna look at the top three for, for an earthling. Grab another everybody's pal. Not bad, free cards are free cards. I'm just gonna take the hit. I got enough defense in my hand that I can comfortably play at three life. This is something I've been working on, honestly, is just getting more comfortable playing at three life. If, if you know your, you know, if you know the card pool well enough and you know your opponent probably doesn't have access to a triple striker, uh, you can get comfortable and play at three life, uh, especially if your hand is turtly enough, defensive enough. That's definitely something that um, you should practice doing if you guys are, you know, trying to get better at this game. Be more comfortable sitting at three life and don't neg too many cards to try and stay at four. Got to kind of see the line and figure out when it's worth it to stay at four versus whether you want to just you know get back to three life and and take a free card for for example. So this is where I kind of mess up. He just he just says free child's wish and I and I instinctively just blind bloodlust, which I shouldn't have done. I should have actually looked at his drop area and seen what was actually in there for him to re revive. I had a good idea. I mean he's he's seen some. Uh, not, he hasn't really seen too many dead cards. Like, there's two Oolongs in there. There's a one drop Trunks, but the one drop Trunks is what he's going to end up bringing out. I should have checked his drop area because um, there wouldn't have really been anything of value. If, even if he brought back a Yamcha, um, it wouldn't have really, you know, just getting him one more extra card wasn't really going to do too much. So I should not have blind bloodlusted there. And um, if this was a Chain Zeno play, I would have got super duper punished for this. But luckily, he's going to go for the. I don't think he plays Zeno in the deck, but he's going to go for the Fearless Pan to give his board double strike. Um, yeah, I should have looked through his drop area. I should have saved the Bloodlust. Because the best thing he could have brought back was, I think, everybody's Palyamcha. Um, which was not Bloodlust worthy at all. But I got lazy and instinctively just, like, kind of Bloodlusted that. But it's all good. Our hand's like a book anyway. Uh, thankfully, so. We've got plenty of defense. It's really hard for him to push the game through, uh, all these cards. If you guys are interested in checking out the Lemon Lime Freezer deck profile, I do have the original version up on the channel with a player interview with my buddy Tony. Uh, so that is up there. If you guys want to see the most uh, up-to-date version of the profile, that is on my Patreon. So you guys can check that out. It's in the $1 tier. So you guys can help me out, support a great channel that you guys have uh, hopefully come to know and love. And uh, you guys can help me out and you guys can see the most updated profile. I can't really spam, you know, deck profiles of the same decks over and over again. It's just, it's not interesting content and it's... Um, you know, it's just not worth it to do that. I mean, it's just it's not, you know, new and interesting content But I can you know make patreon articles, you know daily or weekly every time the deck changes with um, new specific text So you guys can check that out there But he does finally get all seven Dragon Balls in the drop area on turn five. Oh man that that Dragon Ball Seeker Bulma would be so clutch For him or uh, would have been so clutch earlier in the game. So I draw for turn I draw a bloodlust we're going for game though So I just throw it down the charge 
uh if you're gonna go for game charge any extra card in your hand like just the extra energy to make plays with is so worth it because you can't combo with extra cards so just going for game with as much energy as possible is really helpful and if, if for some reason i don't kill him i still have two energy standing up which is just nuts so we're gonna go shenron bring back the super combo sorry again for the glare so we're gonna go leader swing and realistically he can't block this because i have bigger swingers on the board if he blocks it he can't after image technique because he's got one life and he's tapped out and uh if he blocks this he just has to combo out of a bigger swing so he realistically he, he can't block it so i go with my leader swing draw a card i go all the way in all the way in uh, i believe this is going to be a 125k swing for game 25 35 45 55 65 75 85 95 105 115 125 swing for game but he does have three super combos which is pretty legit and remember his uh his dragon balls and his drop barrier are one pile he just kind of separates them to make sure we you know we both know how many dragon balls are in his drop area which is kind of helpful but yeah he's gonna try and defend out of it um he's at currently 20, 15 25 35 45 55 60 uh, i extend the handshake because we're talking about it but yeah uh that's gonna wrap up that game so yeah he got off to a real slow start and uh, my deck got really hit its curve and stride which is really cool uh, i actually would have been curious i mean i know the piccolo the red piccolo he plays it in the deck because i see him charge it in another game but um yeah i know that piccolo can swing a couple times which is pretty cool but yeah hopefully you guys enjoy that live gameplay uh thanks again adrian for you know helping me get some content on the channel uh it was super awesome doing the podcast with you guys so if you guys enjoyed that let me know in the comments below and we'll be getting you another live gameplay game with me against adrian from no counters no combos his channel will be in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it my name is joey this is crossbow tcg and i will see you next time